So today we're going to do uh, sort of classic algebra material, which is finding the equation of a line between two points. Probably a lot of you have seen the rise over the run form to love and all of that before, but if not, we will see it now. It's um, it's a, it's slightly awkward. I, I mean, the real reason this gets talked in algebra is that it's really important for anyone who's going on to take out to this and. I know that most of you here do not have ambitions to take out to this, but we'll cover it. It, it won't hurt, that say. So, um, if you have two points on a plane, there is one and only one straight line you can draw connecting those two points. I know my straight line decayed into a curve pretty quickly, but, and that's, I mean, that's one of the sort of the oldest mathematical observations everybody has ever made the Greek mathematician Euclid, who's the founder of geometry, made that observation as one of his axioms of mathematics, one of the things that he thought was obviously true and that he based his geometry on. So, let's state as a goal, given two points, find the equation of a line that connect those two points. And then we will try to do an example or two where, where there is some kind of real world meaning behind this. Probably that introduction I gave was a little demoralizing, but there are situations in the real world where it's interesting to do this. And let's start. So if we've got a point, let's call it x sub 1 and y sub 1. And we've got another point. Let's call it x sub 2 comma y sub 2. And we're trying to find the equation of the line between them. Well, something that I haven't explicitly said, and I guess I better say, is that the equations of lines are linear equations. Today's lecture is a sequel to last lecture. The equation of a line is going to be y equals mx plus B. And remember this M, which I've called a rate of change. Pleased to see you. This M in the context of lines is traditionally referred to as the slope. So we'll talk about slopes instead of rates of change. And I mean, this equation kind of gives away what we need to do, right? 
a linear equation has a value m and it has a value of b. So if we're going to write the linear equation down, we need to know what m is and we need to know what b is. And we find m and b in order. So our first goal here has to be to find the slope, because we're going to use the slope to find B. It has to be done in this order. And I theorize that probably a lot of you have seen this before. Some of you won't have. That's perfectly fine. But does anybody remember? the equation for a slope. That is exactly correct. Thank you. So we've got these points. And what we just heard, maybe, maybe a little quickly, but we subtract the y coordinates. And we subtract the x coordinates and we divide. So that's how we find the slope. And geometrically, here's y2 minus y1. Here's x2 minus x1. The sort of the way a lot of people memorize this is they memorize the phrase rise over run. Because, well, because at least in this picture that I've drawn, we're rising up. We're going from here up to here, and the rise is telling us how much are we rising? What's the vertical would change? Run is a slightly odder or maybe a slightly old-fashioned word. We probably don't see a run used for horizontal distances very often, but it used to be used that way. So that's where this phrase comes from. And if you're ever wondering, you have the points, but you don't know what x, which point is x1, y1, and which point is x2, y2, well, good news, it doesn't matter. You subtract the y coordinates, you subtract the x coordinates, you divide. For example, Let's say one seven and five nine. Let's find the slope of the line that connects. And what I've said is that we subtract the y coordinates. We subtract the x coordinates and we divide. So that's what I'll do. And in this picture, here's the point x1, y1, and here's the point x2 y2. 9 minus 7 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 3. We wind up no, 4. You're correct. Thank you. 
and always just yell out if I do something like that. So we wind up with a slope of one half. And what I was trying to say earlier, I, mean, I don't know if it was totally clear, but the way this formula is written, it looks like it should matter which point is x1, y1, and which point is x2, y2. But it doesn't matter. If we reverse these, if we call this x1, y1, and this, x2, y2, then when we calculated the slope, we subtract the y's in a different order, and we subtract the x's in a different order, we get negative 2 over negative 4, the negative signs would cancel, and we'd still wind up with one half. So you subtract the y's, you subtract the x's. It doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1, or which point you call x2, y2. So everyone with me so far? going a little fast just because we had a speaker use up some time. That sounds very ingracious. I invited her. She used up some time because I asked her to. Um, but if we agree that we can find M, um, well, maybe, maybe let's just do a slightly a slightly more complicated example where we have some negative signs floating about. And let's find the slope of the line connecting those points. And the, um, the point I'm trying to make here is that when we're subtracting, we have to be careful with negative signs. Remember that minus a minus is addition. So if we subtract our y's, 7 minus negative 3, and then we have negative 1 minus 6. 7 minus negative 3 is 7 plus 3, so it's 10. And then negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7, and traditionally, when we're writing a fraction, we pull negative signs out rather than keeping them in the denominator. And we get negative 10 sevenths. Well, that's half the battle. Because um, as I say, an equation has two parts. It has an M and it has a B. And if we know how to find M, that leaves us having to find B. Yeah. And this is, this is, I would say, the if, um, if a student struggles with this, this is traditionally yeah, the part of the problem where that struggle is likely to occur. So let's slow down slightly. And let's see how it's done. And I want space. So we found M. And let's sort of partition this off. 
So we know what M is in this example. Y equals one half X plus B. Y equals MX plus B, but we know that M is a half. That's why I say we have to find M first. Does anybody already know or remember the trick here? How do we find B? given the information that we have on the board. So we uh, subtract, so we just take one point and then we subtract the y number with y. So it would be like y minus seven and then equals one half x. And then the x we would subtract by one. Okay, that's good. It will, um, let's talk about this a little, because I say that a slope or that a line looks like this. And this is what I was going to work with, but since a student brought it up, let's talk about another way that we can write a line. This way of writing a line is called the slope intercept. Four. And it's called that for pretty straightforward reasons. There's a slope and there's an intercept. Another way of writing a line is called the point slope. Where you have a point and the slope. And I, I did that in a weird order. I said you have a point while well, I was writing M, but of course, M is the slope. So you have a point and you have a slope. The point slope form is y minus the y coordinate equals m times x minus the x coordinate. And using the point slope form, I mean, look at what we have here. We have a slope, and we have a point. The point slope form will let us plug that slope and plug that point directly into the formula. And again, you might ask, you might say, well, I have two points, right? Why did I, why did I circle the point I circled? Why did I circle this point instead of this point? And again, the answer is that it doesn't matter. No matter what point you use, you're going to wind up with the same line. So if instead of what I have here, instead of the slope-intercept form, we use the point slope form. Well, y minus the y coordinate. This is what I currently have circled, so let's go with it. y minus nine equals one half times x minus five. The only thing is you're usually going to be asked to clean this up. Um, you're usually going to be asked to write your answer in the slope intercept form. So at this point, 
we do have a little work to do. Y minus nine equals, how can I simplify the right-hand side of that equality? Multiply x minus five by one half. So the multiplication distributes is the, the fancy way of saying that. Then that nine can come over to the right. Is it going to confuse anybody? If I write the nine as 18 over two, we're going to need a common denominator in a moment. So I write nine as 18 over two, because I know that I'm about to want to subtract five over two. So, this is one way to do it, and it's not the way I was expecting to, um, to do it. So, we change things on the fly, but that's great. I love it when students answer my questions. Um, I will say, however, that there is a way to do this just using the point slope form and not, I mean, just using the slope intercept form and not, you know, committing a point slope to memory. And that's what I was starting to do here. Let me, let me figure this out. And saying, well, we know that y equals one half x plus b. And we know we go through a point, five comma nine. And the point five comma nine this is making a statement about x's and y's. This is saying that when x equals five, y equals nine. And we can then say, okay, When x is five, y is nine. So nine is one half times five plus b. I'm taking the x coordinate and I'm taking the y coordinate and I'm plugging them right into this um, slope-intercept form. 18 over 2 is 5 over 2 plus b. Subtract that 5 halves from both sides. Thirteen over two equals b, and now we're done. Well, I shouldn't say we're done because the problem was find the equation of a line, and what we don't have on the whiteboard is the equation of a line. So we better we better actually give an answer y equals one half x plus b and b is 13 over 2. And of course, 
It would be a sad situation if we solved the same problem two different ways and got different answers, but that has not happened here. Y is one half X plus 13 over two. We got that using the point slope form. Then y equals one half x plus 13 over two. We got that using the slope intercept form. And I don't um, have, I mean, you can do this however you do. I just, you know, Pedagogically, I don't normally teach the uh, point slope form just because I think making students memorize two form to those when they could memorize one instead might be slightly confusing. But whether you do it the way we did it on this frame, or the way we did it on this frame, either way is perfectly all right with me. Any questions about that process? Then we really should do some kind of word problem. Um, I mean, that's just do problem five from the sheet. Uh, and problem five from the sheet, which I know you don't have yet, um, a peek behind the scenes, but it's because if I hand them out at the beginning of class, people are working on them and not listening to me is a problem I ran into. But, um, but the problem from the sheet is finding a very famous conversion formula. The conversion formula between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So all of these conversion formulas are linear. So the relationship between a temperature in Celsius and temperature in Fahrenheit is a linear relationship. And the thing about this problem is that I don't give you any points. I just give you some information. So why the boiling point of water and the freezing point of water are the things that everybody always learns, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've ever needed to know what temperature water boils at. But when we learn these temperature scales, we always learn that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we learn that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And I said I was going to do this problem. Let me actually just get you started and make the observation that we need to make here, which is that this and this can both be used to give us a point on the line. Um, so remember that degrees Celsius is X. 
So when x equals zero, y equals 32. And this is telling us that the point zero comma 32 is on this line. When water boils, X is a hundred and Y is 212. And this is the same as saying that the point 100 comma 212 is on the line. And now that we have two points that are on the line, we should be able to proceed and to find the equation of the line. Any questions before I give out? I'll call it the class work. I don't think anyone's going to get it done in class, although maybe someone will surprise me. Um, hand out the homework slash class work. I'm hearing no questions, so let's set this out. Just enough, I think. Boys, I'll sort of mill about. If you have questions, just raise your hand and I'll run over. At least it waited until the class work to start being weird. Oh. Speaking of, I should probably end that recording.
Sure. So let's look at seven. So what we need here is point. So if we have two points on a line, then we can find the equation. And what points I here look like is that X is the number of T-shirts sold, and Y is the profit, right? It, it tells you that here. So when X is 35, what's Y? Right. So when X is 35, Y is 437.5. Yes. No problem. Seventy-two. Give me a few points. Yes. 